Farmers have been protesting for weeks against EU policies in countries across Europe. Some of the biggest protests have been in Poland, where farmers were also angry over cheaper food imports from neighbouring Ukraine. The signs are ominous. The EU and its tame member state governments are doing their level best to crush agriculture. Forget their words, just watch their actions. The last couple of days has seen riot police in Poland squaring off against their own farming community. And it looks like the farmers are attempting to get through the police cordons in order to engage productively with their politicians. Euronews.com reports, Poland saw its most violent protest by farmers and supporters yet on Wednesday as some participants threw stones at police and tried to push through barriers around Parliament, injuring several officers, police said. Police used tear gas and said they detained over a dozen people and prevented the protesters from getting through to the Polish Parliament. And judging by videos published on social media, the police are quite happy to use their batons freely and as often as possible, as well as snatch squads, not to mention the totally free use of pepper sprays against anyone in their vicinity. I could show you some of the juicier video shots, but this platform would rather I didn't, if you get my drift. This from a country where the party that got the most votes last October is not in power, but a cobbled together so-called centrist coalition led by one Donald Tusk is in power. But net zero is still the order of the day and shutting down agriculture is still the order of the day. Nothing has changed after their recent election, except that the police appear to be acting their part with added gusto. Yet another country where I think we'll see a massive vote for right-of-centre parties in the EU Parliament elections in June, and that's just three months away. The Eurocrats must be shaking in their boots. And watching these images coming in, it's hard to imagine that Donald Tusk will retain credibility going forwards. Oh, he has the backing of Brussels, no doubt, but I think the Polish people will have another view. And the size of the protest should have the Polish government and EU overlords thinking again. And the list of complaints the farmers have is a recurring theme across the developed world. As GB News reported, Polish farmers have burnt EU flags during a violent clash with riot police in what marks the latest instance in a string of demonstrations across Europe. The protesters gathered outside Prime Minister Donald Tusk's office in Warsaw to demand a pause on cheap imports and environmental regulations which they say are hindering their livelihoods. And these are the same complaints UK farmers have. Hence none of this is anything to do with Brexit, but everything to do with politicians across Europe and wider afield being in total thrall to the likes of the World Economic Forum and the useful idiot eco-loons. And the upshot is that Western governments are rushing to obey all the net zero recommendations that are issued by just about anyone with the result that manufacturing has to be offshored so that they can claim their country is the greenest, and now agriculture has to follow as our political masters continue with their race to the bottom. And they've hung their hats on electrifying everything, despite not having the power to make it all work. And then to cap it all, according to the latest estimates, the UK will be importing an increased number of 315,000 new arrivals every single year for the foreseeable future, to make up for the 5 million or so who are long-term off sick. And that means we'll have 350,000 more than expected over the next five years than we assumed last year. 70,000 more than expected every single year will be coming. Every single one of them will need housing, water, food, healthcare, transport, heating, etc, etc, etc.
Not exactly a green approach, is it? And here's what the Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, said in his budget announcement yesterday when he talked about more investment and better jobs in every corner of the country. One of the biggest barriers to investment is businesses not being able to hire the staff they need. The economy today has around 900,000 vacancies. It would be easy to fill them with higher migration, but with over 10 million adults of working age who are not in work, that would be economically and morally wrong. Those who can work should. Yet we're still going to keep our borders wide open so that another 315,000 can come here every single year, and that's without the dinghy arrivals. That's why I always say, don't listen to them, watch what they actually do. And instead of increasing our ability in the UK to grow more good food, we're rewilding and planting trees on good arable land in order to please the World Economic Forum. The rest of the land will presumably be covered in houses for the newcomers and windmills and solar panels for all the energy we need, while at the same time setting up trade deals to import cheaper and possibly lower quality food to bypass and gradually strangle the last remaining farmers out of business. And this is exactly why the Polish farmers are doing what they're doing. It's happening to them too. And if our politicians start pushing insect eating and the consumption of factory-produced gunky Frankenstein foods and dairy again, then we the people should insist that all meals in the Palace of Westminster in the subsidised restaurants and bars should switch to bugs and Frankenstein food and drink for a five-year trial period. Then watch how many of our political masters eat out every single day. And after 14 years in power, overseeing our energy security degrade from awful when they came into office down to totally awful, the Chancellor was waxing lyrical yesterday about how the UK will have a quarter of its energy supplied by nuclear by 2050. Had Labour, the Tory Lib Dem coalition and the Tories had their eye on the ball, we could have had that decades ago. And how much steel are we going to be forced to import from China and India to build these reactor facilities because we no longer have a virgin steel-making capability of our own? But if we're importing all our manufactured goods and all our food, what exactly are we making and selling? Are we really going to be relying on the service sector and the likes of filmmaking? While we eat dung beetles, grasshoppers and bioplastic food in bioplastic wrapping? Anyway, if these Polish and other farmers in Europe and across the West keep their protests up despite the corporate policing actions of the law enforcement agencies, the global establishment will have to come up with something similar to the health emergency to shut society down again to give them a chance of taking control especially if the uppity proles join in. Wonder what that new threat will be? Some sort of alien invasion or something, maybe? Anyway, when the next election comes along and we comprehensively ditch the Tories, I think we'll find out that absolutely nothing changes. That's maybe when we'll start to wake up. <laughs>